Welcome back to some of the top level beyond all reason. 16 commanders enter. But only, I was going to say eight, but only one team can survive. At least eight commanders will be eliminated, though I have a suspicion there will be many more than that. As these are some of the best players, including Flash who is apparently one of the best players at Beyond All Reason. I choose, against many odds, to believe that is THE Flash. Um, but we're on eight horses. You have the Great River of Kevin. It's called the River Kevin because the first time I saw this map, there was a player named Kevin who controlled the river and was very adamant about it, and I thought that was fun. So, here we are. Let me introduce... Uh, otherwise, there's plenty of metal strewn throughout your very quick crash course and beyond all reason. If you haven't watched anything before and you're wondering why you're here, is no, it's not Supreme Commander. No, it's not Total Annihilation, but it's pretty damn close. The uh, most generous spiritual successor to Total Annihilation 2, free to play, open source, and the best RTS that you probably already started playing if you're watching this. And if you haven't, well, you're going to be confused anyways, but hopefully entertained. You build an army, whether it's bots, vehicles, aircraft, hovercraft. There's hundreds of units, but you only need a handful to get things started. Your commander or any amount of construction workers can build things like solar panels or wind for power. Uh, and eventually tech up towards fusion reactors. So instead of sucking up the sunlight, you create some of your own. But... In the early game, getting out onto the map and securing those metal resources. Here, you see. Okay, what is the button for it? Yeah, there you go. Is what it's all about, where many of the players will be pushing out with their first early units. Whether they're Armada or Cortex. Whether they have grunts or pawns, or in this case, ticks. Not a, a meaningful difference overall, but does affect the strategies in the late game somewhat. And, of course, control of River Kevin is going to be a key point as well. So, now that we've got all that out of the way and you're an expert in the game, let me introduce our commanders. Guilty Aphis on, on the Eastern team. Aaron! I'm got We're introducing... Uh, you know what? I can't introduce an order of skill rank. Uh, let me move over to the side here. You can see there matchmaking skill and honestly i've never seen a lobby of this many high level players probably because i'm not invited for reasons that i'm not a high level player. anyways el barto barra fail innocent eight wait a for those who don't know aphis advanced fusion reactor uh CJOP is in the water, the highest ranked player on the Eastern team. Commander, working his way. He can walk within the water, though I'm not sure how effective he's going to be at combat. Mom's boy toy, as well as Sal. And on the other side of the map, we have. Oh, where's. Uh, here we are. Emmer, Flash, Skymere. Evolved Monkey, Ro, Deltars, and Rhetoric. So let's get the, the lay of the land, if you would. So far, both sides moving towards the front line. The river controlled by the Eastern team to a significant extent. Though Mouse, oh, I, I skipped Mouse, who, who was hiding in the, in the river over there. I see you. But, as they contest those center metals, the most efficient way you can gather more metal is by picking up a new metal extractor. Those things pay off. Even, even with only uh, two metal per second here, they pay off in less, at 30 seconds tops, as uh, they only cost about 50 energy, uh, or 50 metal and 500 energy. So, even getting it for another minute is a massive payoff though they are incredibly easy to kill. What do we have up here? The standoff. Some grunts. Some pawns. The grunts can outrange the pawns, but the pawns have much higher DPS up close. Demonstration. 
We know Flash isn't up. They're looking out for Flash. We're going to be able to see both sides uh, comments. I'm not exactly sure how to manage that. We'll have to see. Innocent Aphis. Aphus. Do people... Is it Aphus? Aphus? I say Aphus. Um, Aphus? No, definitely not that. Um, uh, I guess people don't really say it out loud because that would... Actually, from what I understand, at least some of the players were on Discord during this match, so. Ron's moving forward, pushing off the punt. Control of the Oasis here uh, is going to be a defining characteristic of the early mid-game. Because I like making dramatic statements like that. Remember, I don't know much, but I'm very good at saying things confidently. So, control of the Oasis is going to be key in the early mid-game here as whichever team controls it has that northern half of the map and can effectively isolate the river and cut off at least two players and make it that much easier to push through to the rest. Pretoric and Delta are here. Sal, CJ, I don't know where CJ's commander is. It's out on the front lines, despite him being the naval presence for the Eastern team. The exchange is Flash and Aaron very close. Aaron, you're overextended, says Barto. He didn't say it like that. I was uh, editorializing. I apologize. Emmer grabbing a little bit of that metal to the to the south, whereas Guilty Aphis, the rocket bots on each side here. As the lines are drawn, and oh no, it's going down. The commander taking a lot of damage, trying to surround. Are we going to see the first kill? Nobody. No. 23%. A lot of commitment. Oh, but wait. Rest in peace. Sal lost his commander. Oh my god, he says. It's a disaster. It wasn't a trade. I don't know how that happened, but uh, we missed it. Yes, we did. Not not you. Not, not, not me. Us. Oh my. 4% HP. When the commander dies, a massive explosion and 2,000 metal left behind on the ground. Which, uh, right now, Deltars is going to grab and use to power the rest, possibly killing um, Sal in this case. Meanwhile, on the center line, the Western team, you can actually see the income of each player over here, uh, with this option enabled, and the overall team. I would, I, I, I would maybe at some point like an option to make those larger for, um, casting purposes, but overall, a marginal advantage in energy for the Eastern team. I think a lot of that is coming from the water, but I would be 100% wrong. CJ has very little energy income, and he's going on very little commander at this moment. Meanwhile, Flash and Aaron, I'm going to go ahead and clear uh, some of these uh, writings as uh, ancient history at this point. And we will see. Oh, Aaron has pushed off Guilty Aphis. His rocket bots have managed to work their way past. And now, ooh, artillery over the top of the mountain, though. And Elbarto is trying to flank Flash. And uh, whoever orange is, Skymere here. I don't think this is exactly the position he wants to be. Vehicles not well known for traversing mountain ranges. In my extensive vehicle. What the hell? Oh! Ah, yes. <laughs> the, the, the barrel roll move upon death is, is keyed for intimidation purposes. When there isn't a production queue, there is. As we see here, both players, both sides rather, we got pawns. We got brute medium tanks and uh, a little bit of everything. More boats. You could have probably figured that one out. Nothing up to the north side. Really macroing right now is Mom's boy toy. Building up energy, if you would. Very important in his line of work. Uh, Emmer is just... Actually, not the... Is that a switch to T... No, it's not a switch to T2. In fact, Tier 2 is immensely expensive. Between the uh, 2,900 or so. Um, for the initial... Let's pick on one of these constructors. 2900 just to get the tier 2 lab or more factory and then another few hundred for the tier 2 constructor the startup cost is is pretty intense which is why um your teammates will likely get upset at you if you try to rush it with nothing else because some of the best ways to get metal 
are by reclaiming the wrecks on the field after winning a battle. And, of course, when you win a battle, you can probably move forward and grab some more metal extractors. So, a bit of a compounding advantage in that case. Overall, though, the Eastern team is sitting on 500 more energy production than uh, that of their counterparts. And that is the activities of Mom's Boy Toy back here, who has managed... I'm not sure who got the... Uh, well, he's got the geothermal, one of the most efficient, if dangerous, ways. And a whole lot of wind farms, spreading them out with that Alt-Z key while shift queuing in order to uh, prevent chain reactions from obliterating the entire farm with a single hit. What do we have down there? Thankfully, the players are pinging, so I can tell what's going on. Pump up the jams, or actually, the just in general. Flash. Oh my. Artillery coming in. Wolverine tanks. Sky mirror. Looking... Flash going forward, trying to dodge the artillery, and, and kind of success, actually kind of a pro gamer move, which of course you'd expect from Flash. He, they can't, oh my god, look at this. This is the camera of Eren. But wait a second, he's been spotted. Flash, not really pay, takes a pretty big hit, but cloaks. Some dangerous moves here. He's ready for the D-Gun. Oh, just takes out an entire line of Wolverines. Skymere, though, to the north. Still taking a lot of damage. Skymere's on Flash's team, so don't get so dramatic. I, I realize that now. It took me a second. He wasn't getting flanked. He was getting saved. But if he turned his coat... No, you can't do that. Alright, Barafel still holding the center line. They're all trying to buy time for Mom's boy toy to charge up. As well as El Barto, really macroing up for the Eastern team. But what about on the other side? Flash himself has 1.2k energy, as does Evolved Monkey, passing that 1k mark at around 10 minutes. Adding a whole lot of wind farms. Evolved Monkey having a lot of success, it looks like. If we look at the statistics, it bears that out. As 50k damage, more than anyone else in the game, he's killed. Uh, his damage efficiency is at 173. Emmer at 295 efficiency, so essentially how much you kill versus how much you lose. Uh, but doing a great job of holding the center line against one to three players simultaneously. Oh, well, here comes. Whoever... Uh, oh, Ro! Just obliterating the front line. So, the res bots, the, the, the thugs here, the plasma bots, are able to punch through and, and drive back the eastern team. Barafel calling for reinforcements as all his units were wiped out. Meanwhile, we haven't looked at the north lately in the river. Uh, a lot of wrecks on the bottom of the water here as well as continued effort oh my they're all stacked up which is less than ideal those assault boats i believe dealing with the destroyers but they're able to get the flank do that extra damage from another angle but retreating i think in time going over the the shallows here where their commander can get involved and gets a repair one destroyer down cj trying to close the different distance here Getting some help from the land. How much HP on that destroyer? Enough. As the commander repairs. And they'll maintain their grip on at least this land bridge for now. Very important to hold the oasis. But Evolved Monkey continues evolving. Pushing forward. Meanwhile, the rest of the map does seem to be a bit of a, a stalemate there. But clearly... If, we, if I do my, my technical drawing, you'll see Evolved Monkey has pushed past the center. Uh, a bold move. You don't, you don't want to go too far or you risk getting collapsed upon by the outlying flanks. But I think they've found an opportunity to punch through. Mm, a whole lot of damage so far. Still, 70, almost double the rest of his team. In fact, they'll over double. He doesn't have... He has a decent economy back at home. The fuel at 1.2k. 
still on tier one units for the most part. The naval battle continues. Even a torpedo launcher added on. Some aircraft here from Skymere. What do we got? Seaplane gunships. Wait, what? Where did you get sea? <laughs> I guess it counts. Anyways, those seaplane gunships, though, are looking for targets. I have no idea how well they do. They're not. Oh wait, those aren't. Those were just scouts, really. Swarmers, maybe fighters, but. Gunships does imply anti-air. Some of them going down, they do damage when they crash. Hits the energy converters. Explosive decompression. And while there is some anti-air coming up from his northern teammates, still gonna be incredibly annoying to- Oh no, those wind farms are real stacked up here. That is a prime opportunity. I'm surprised he isn't taking it. He's, he's microwing. Oh. Doesn't start the chain reaction on the wind farms. Gets knocked out of the sky, off the map. So, very lucky here for Guilty Aphis that he doesn't lose most of his energy production. Flash punching through with some of these tanks, stout tanks from Armada. Finds his way behind the lines, undercutting a lot of Alberto's efforts as he was looking the other way, dealing with those seaplanes in the middle of what is mostly open land. There are lines of anti-air turrets here, but those don't cover if he just comes in from the side. He's really relying on his teammates. There are some tier two mortar bots, the Sheldons, quite annoying on mass. Trying to go for the geothermal, but the tanks kind of getting bottled up there. Meanwhile, CJ losing a long ah! I was gonna say CJ losing some ground, but Deltar's losing his commander. Finally, vengeance for Sal. After like 10 minutes. Will it be enough to turn the tides here, literally and figuratively, in the River Kevin? Oh, evolved monkey! Pushing all the way. He's got, he even rezzed a bunch of these. You can see the little halos that indicates a unit that was resurrected. Brought back from a wreck. As he's got these uh, grave robbers here, aptly named. Bringing more units online, the critical mass. But some fiends. The tier two flamethrowers. Is that enough though? That's a lot of tier one. And fiends are probably the weakest of the tier two units. We'll have to see. The thugs can outrange. And they're chasing them down. Yeah, it's not enough. It's not gonna cut it. Some of those units leveled up as well. The seaplanes trying to come in though, going over. Oh! Whoa. Hey, those are bombers. See, I'm a I'm a genius. I figured that out all on my own. Seaplane's doing it. Oh wait, they're not done. They're going into mom's boy toys. Well, actually, it's mostly wind. Oh, another commander! Down goes innocent Aphis. Is that tier three? Oh, he hits the energy converters, but the rest go down. Marauders, amphibious assault mechs. Honestly, kind of close to their counterpart in StarCraft. They're not that expensive. They're relatively quick, but they hit pretty hard. They're the cheapest tier three unit, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, only a thousand metal. I say only, but that's really compared to the Thor, for example, or the Titan. Uh, still quite cheap and very importantly quick and can walk through water. Going AFK for the next 20 minutes. CJ says, can you guys stop teching? And now this is an important team game interaction where you complain about your teammates. Uh, this is just part of the meta. It looks like the takedown, the explosion, just broke the critical mass of Evolved Monkey. And his units were not able to press further, but it did cost them a commander. Just pushing through. I don't, uh, well, there's a lot of turret. Oh, shurikens flying in able to stun that EMP building up so quick he, he kept them in reserve. But now Ro is uh, that the tier three is supposed to be the moment when you start, you, you gotta get something done. You've been sitting back in the corner as your teammates have clearly noticed for like 15 minutes. Okay, not quite that, but pretty close to that. And you come out with these tier three units 
and get shut down at the first sign of defense. So that's not ideal. The shurikens come out, a very cost-effective counter to small amounts of strong units, especially with very limited to no anti -air. Let me, uh, I don't know what the hotkey is for info on default hotkeys, if someone could help me with that. And it looks like the River Kevin has been almost entirely overtaken. The Shallows, the wrecks almost getting in the way of movement. In fact, they, I'm not sure if they have collision underwater. But the battle will continue. Those destroyers cutting off the ground here. Ethan has some of the Resbot subs underneath. Oh, EMP missile lands. So the advanced version of space is in oh, oh, cool. So they they do have a anti-air missile launcher, but probably not good against masses of units like the shurikens. Meanwhile, a bunch of fiends. Fiends, one of the fastest units with 83 speed compared to a Tiger Tank, which only has 71, so they could just kind of sprint by if you're out of position for too long. This is potentially disastrous, as there is nothing left to defend here. I'm not seeing... Those are... I don't know if those are fighters. No, those are just fighters. They have nothing to do with the Flamers on the ground. It's already been a tough situation here in the southeast, but... Oh, uh, well... I'm not even sure what hit him. He may have... I guess the chain reaction hit all those. Anyways, well that, he has been wiped off the field. Rest in peace is Guilty Aphis, who now has 300 energy income, but I think that might just be trickle from his teammates. Oh, he has a geothermal plant, 2v1, ah yes. And, and this is the part, of course, where you start complaining about your teammates. It is his time. And to be fair, he is dead, so he doesn't have much else to do. The fuck? What happened here? It's... There was an explosion. Did Flash just intentionally detonate something in order to clear space in his base efficiently? Flash has 4.5 thousand energy income. Oh, here come the seaplanes. It's not over yet. They found an angle. And the seaplanes, some of them will get gunned down, but there's just so many of them. A bombing run hits the fusion reactor. Down it goes. Another pass being lined up. There's limited anti-air, but on to the geothermal, which if it does go down, will explode and spell disaster. Not literally, figuratively. Another round. Oh, I don't know how much HP we have that. Oh, 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 God. Ow. Well, that's certainly not great. Um, that was a uh, finding the juiciest targets there. Overall, the energy income has tilted in favor. Part of this was that the uh, Eastern team was incredibly. If you look at Mom's boy toy back here with his beautifully manicured wind farms is now sitting on uh, about a third of the energy income of his team. How's the metal doing? Uh, what? Sal has 200 metal per minute, which I assume is coming from a whole lot of salvaging, which adds to your average. Especially considering, well, you can see here, the, the ships that have yet to be salvaged. In fact, CJ's pushing back, and with the hounds helping out. Oh, what do we have here? Are those seaplanes? EMP bombers. Well, here's a demonstration. Of both sides EMPing. A stun. Not really finding the mark with a lot of the bombers, to be honest. The flamer's still intact, and you do very much run the risk of bombing yourself. Friendly fire is very much on. Uh, so, yeah, the bombers are bombing his own marauders, and, well, it looks like it was, it looked like it was gonna be good, and now it's definitely not great. The bombers coming in, getting shot down by Flash's fighter aircraft. The marauders trying to do their best, but the fiends, but wait! Who's this? 
more fiends coming in from the south, at least clearing up some of it. Marauders surrounded. Uh, a lot of those fighters will be shot out of the sky, but any attempt at a push here has been summarily destroyed. Well, wait, more fighters! But wait, there's more. Another EMP. I don't know where that missile silo is located. It has pretty long range, so it doesn't need to be too close by. Uh, I don't even know who has the EMP missiles. Uh, I'm so blind. They're pretty easy to find icons for everything, but I'm not used to looking. They're... Where is it coming from? Another, another set of EMPs. I hear shurikens. Ah, here we are. Shurikens from the Eastern team. Stunning a lot of, well, not enough though. He's only got grunts and shurikens. So fiends can't, can't shoot up, but a lot of the seaplanes just got knocked out of the sky. Well, so the EMP does no damage, but, uh, I mean, well, you, you time out. I, time out. Uh, waiting for reinforcements there. Oh, CJ has T2 water. What are those? Paladins. The cruisers. Far outstripping anything that, that the Western team can field. More EMPs. Shuriken still holding those fiends down. Waiting for reinforcements. It looks like guilty Aphis. They've lost a player. Oh, um, whoever, whoever this player was that got completely obliterated decided to tap it out, which I can't blame them too much for that, but unfortunate. Cruiser still working their way past. Only one torpedo launcher, not enough. And with it, they will reclaim much of the River Kevin, but that's a whole lot of shurikens. Trying not to get them gunned down by those missile launchers. The Marauders holding the center. So many shurikens. The Flamers still stuck as the Grunts close in to finish them off. The income lead goes heavily to the Western team now. Sitting at 30,000. Energy, oh no, some Flamers got by as if any part of the flank crumbles it becomes that much easier for the enemy to slip in and ruin your economy it does seem like the southern side of the map is is going heavily to the western team but there is still control to the north cj well the sheer amount of destroyers that's just an anti-air I don't even think it has an anti-ground option. Wait, what is that? An aircraft carrier? I don't know if it can... It has anti-nuke capability. I don't know if there are any nukes on the field, but... It can carry aircraft, which is certainly... Not a useless... Thing to have. Seaplanes coming in for another pass. How far were they? Going right for that geothermal again. It went so well last time. This time, there was less to chain react with. It actually hits all the seaplanes, so... Hopefully it was worth it. <laughs> Flash is helping out with some snipers up top. Is he... Okay, wait, wait, wait. Is he ferrying the snipers with an, a repeat command on his... Or is he microwing it? Oh, well, it's clearly not going perfect as he's bringing one back. But, the idea's there. The shurikens. Oh, a mass of shurikens holding the line, but it looks like Sal has breached the north. Just streaming tier one units, but once again, those shurikens do not- Oh my god! Look, there's about 85 res bots over here. EMP missile lands. The snipers, though just obliterating the marauders as they get close. That is that is so many res bots and they're all about to die. Unless he can keep the flavors away. No, my God. Oh, geez. It's getting real toasty. 
Oh, it's bad. It's really bad. Oh, no. That was a bit optimistic. I guess... Oh, wow. Oh, they're gonna need resbots themselves. Meanwhile, though, Sal has made it all the way to the back line. It's not over yet. The mammoth tank doesn't fire fast enough. Some of the Razorback battle mechs here. Which is a true tier 3 unit. Stronger than pretty much anything you can pull out uh, at tier 2. Though not so much so, they're, they can't be contested. But... El Barto has stepped up to defend the south. These flamers have... He's reclaiming them as they're frozen, which is his only... Re oh, no! I don't know what happened there, but he's actually using his resbots to reclaim. All right, the grunts just getting roasted. Tier 1 units are no match, but there's so many grunts. El Barto still holding the southern line. Sal and CJ working their way through. Not quite getting to the economy yet. There's still an attempt. Flash has made his way north. And he's got a, quite a death ball of snipers. Got a radar jammer looking to cut off the reinforcements. And that will stop the push in its tracks. Meanwhile, the standoff continues to the south. It has been the eastern team on the back foot for quite a while. Can they deal with this death ball? Can you stun ships? Why not? The snipers, their bullets big enough to cleave a ship in half. <laughs> but still, so many Razorbacks should be enough to break through in Frederick. In Troubled Town right now, the northern half of the map, Flash is trying to keep it intact. Still holding are the southern lines as Flash has redirected his efforts. I think that was the main focus. Flash has... Oh, oh Predorak losing his reactors and his production all but out of it. Evolved Monkey still with the most damage. Sal, though, is matching it. EMP Bomber is coming in. It's not going to be much longer. That fusion reactor looking juicy. And... Well... Point blank. He, he's getting so distracted. Yeah, I think he's trying to... There you go. Well, that hits most of the wind turbines as well. And Frederick is all but out of it. But it did cost a lot of units out of Sal. Who has not been... Hey, he's been efficient enough, but... Will there be a concerted push to the south? As Flash has not redirected his efforts quite yet. Still the fighter screens. Much, much larger amount of them. Oh, boy. So this is a quantity versus quality situation. It's just a bunch of snipers. Up against a wave of, of tier 1 units. Oh my god, each of those shots costs energy, but... Flash has more than enough to go around. In fact, sending some resources to his teammates. Mom's boy toy over here now has over a hundred wind turbines. Frederick trying to rebuild. It's kind of sad, to be honest, but the snipers might get overwhelmed here. Some Jaguar tanks. They're lightning chaining through, but also a danger to the snipers. The Razorback gonna finish him off. A costly surround here, though I'm sure he's already written off those units in order to focus on other parts of the map. Even some of the, uh, the Starlight Tachyons. Mobile turrets. Good against these strong single targets. Oh my god. He is rezzing anything he can get. Though, it looks like the turrets will hold for now, but wait! EMP Bomber! Just a wave of units here. A few flamers behind. And easy pickings. There's so many units on either side right now. Oh, the flamers laying into it. A few sumos mixed in. A lot stronger, much harder for the... Uh... Oh my god, that's so many grunts. 
A Thor! Oh my god, that Thor wiping out! A quarter of the grunts with the... The Thor has 42 kills and two hits. Yeah, the Thor is here. Finally, some real tier three coming out. But how many? Evolved Monkey has 350 units on the field. Just selecting this whole area. 1300. And that's just the center line of units. Oh, but it's going down. The Thor just unchallenged. There is no matching that with those units. You need something stronger, something with ideally much more range. Whereas all of these tachyons, you need to just surround. Oh, what is this? The Hover Swarm! The cruisers are not enough. There's a whole lot of pigs. The hovers are across the northern river. Trying another tactic here. The Thor. Oh, the D-Gun! Out of cloak! The Thor one shot. Row with a risky yet incredibly important play. And that's one way to take it down. And the EMP missiles into the. Oh my. Hmm. Well, what a turnaround. The hovercraft shut down by a few of... <gasps> the Razorbacks were revived by Preteric here and used against CJ in order to hold the line against the mass hovercraft. Artillery. Oh, the Tremor! The massive rapid-fire artillery tank. Just blasting. One shot after another. And hitting a line of that tier one right off the bat. The hovercrafts trying to overtake the river. Here comes Mouse, cloaked commander. I don't know if they have any radar on it. Some ghosts here sneaking around. Shurikens moving back to try to deal with the hovercraft. A lot of panic, because there's approximately 50 quadrillion construction turrets right there. And if one or two of them die, they all will. Oh my god. These really turrets, they just appear. With that many construction turrets. Meanwhile, this is center of the map getting pushed back. Another Thor. Will he fall for it again? in a line of, of potentially self-destructing EMP bots. The, the Spectre spy bots here. The spy bots are called ghosts or specters, respectively. Hmm. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> the Thor is here! Blasting through that chain lightning, hitting so much. The Sumo is actually able to soak it pretty well compared, and it also builds up EMP charge. Where is anti-nuke? Wait, is there a nuke? I don't think so. Some EMPs. Oh, the Thor just blasting through. More EMPs. Rockets. Point blank. The Thor actually launching into his teammates. But the Thor technically, I believe, has an EMP missile as well, which, you know, is kind of helpful. I mean, for, for 10,000 metal, you better get some a extra features. Well, Roe is going to try to make lightning or D-gun strike twice. There's no way he's going to fall for it, right? Here comes Roe in a line of these spy bots. Oh, come on. Not again. Not... No, no, no. Come on, man. Come on, man. Not again. A second one down. I can't believe he... Really? He was busy typing. He's tight. Classic mistake. He was typing as his Thor got, oh my god, and everything died at home, so obviously we missed something else as well. The D-Guns from Roe. He has four kills, but probably the most important four kills in the game so far. And down goes the commander, so no more of that. Sal continues to press forward. The hovercrafts are starting to overrun. The tachyons are enough to hold the line. 
But the hovercrafts are gonna get behind said line. The Razorbacks are shredding them. They decide the tachyons are, are a more realistic option. I don't think there are any realistic options here. Hovercraft closing in. God, those lasers are fucking loud. And... Well, another Thor. And this one is from CJ. Though, there is not, there is no more commander to degun it. Meanwhile, the South, we haven't checked in in a while, has held. They've held this entire time. Even after the Juggernaut! Unrelated. The Juggernaut has arrived, and with it... Well... It's not looking good. It's 100k energy now. Flash has... A whole bunch of advanced fusion reactors. Uh, to the north, they're still holding with a thousand or so resbots. The juggernaut, though. Oh, mom's boy toy rage quit, and that's why CJ has it. Ah. Oh. I was having a tough time. The Juggernaut, plus the Catapult Bot from the back line. It's not looking good for the Eastern team. They've been on the back foot most of the time here. And uh, they will remain there, even with their fancy mountain climbing cannons, which are actually in a pretty good spot. Oh my god. Jesus, lasers, Christ. Uh, the, the sounds are too realistic when you get too close. The Juggernaut has barely been scratched. A bunch of Shiva mechs trying to come through. We'll see how they do against the Juggernaut. Not good enough. Somewhat breaking through to the south here. An area that hasn't seen much real action. Oh, uh, they're, mm, they're about to come up against four Razorbacks, so I don't, I don't think that's going to go very well. Something happened. Is that a nuke? Do we miss a nuke? I don't see a mi- Oh. The center of the- Oh, no. You know what's even worse than one juggernaut? Two juggernaut! As now two coming down the mid lane. We're having a real tough go of it. The Shiva's trying to stack up the damage, but... Oh, what is this? A whole bunch of seaplanes going for the economy, bombing the advanced fusions! Oh, oh my god! It downed the entire base! Well, that'll slow down production a bit. Well, the seaplanes make it by before the fighters can intercept them. Well... A huge play. Is it enough to turn the tides, though? The juggernauts are still marching. Barto. Barto. Barto! In a key position to potentially degun the jugs. Barto seems to be AFK. Oh, wait. He's moving. It, it, they're getting very close. The last chance. Oh, he's not cloaked. He really needs to cloak his commander. He really needs to cloak his commander. He's microing. You gotta cloak the goddamn commander, Barto. Trying to sneak up on these guys. Meanwhile, everything is trained on the juggernauts. 
He de-guns, and it hits the mountain! Oh no! Okay, there we are. Do they notice? He's not cloaked. You're not cloaked, bro. They can see you! The Shivas are chasing. Bardo trying to move in. It does cost a lot of energy to move all cloaked. Oh, uh, the grunts are coming in to reveal the cloak. If they get close enough, they'll be spotted. So just using them as shields against the cloak commander. The economies aren't too far off here. But... Well, that's certainly not gonna help. The Juggernaut still. The one near full HP, the other half. And a bunch of those grunts looking for the commander. Meanwhile, to the north, it's mostly been breached, as that seaplane strike was enough. But if the Juggernauts get to the base, now there are three of them. Varta fell! Oh, he's a point blank! The D-Gun gets one! Looking for more! Fires a gun! It's enough! He gets two! It's three commanders to two, by the way. Three for the Western team, two for the East. This is one of them. The game ends when all commanders are destroyed. That is the only condition. Or you resign, but... One more juggernaut. Here, it is very likely when you degun that you will end up losing the commander sooner or later. And if, if they've left their unit on its own, maybe they can't follow it up, but the commander will survive the explosion um, because otherwise it would kind of suck. But usually it's followed up by so many units. Meanwhile, from the north, this is, it's kind of an elimination race right now, as we're getting down to it, waiting for that juggernaut, patiently. Barto here, gotta be careful not to be caught in the lasers. The Razorbacks are coming across the northern river. They're using that position to flank the juggernaut in a, in a dicey situation. EMP lands and slows down some of the Razorbacks. Meanwhile, oh, but wait, a whole bunch of bombers crushing this attempt. Almost get... Oh, the fusions are right there, but not right there enough. Barto de gun the jug! Another one down. But... A Titan. A little bit harder to get in front of. Not nearly as threatening as a Juggernaut, but still very threatening. The bombers held the line for now. Oh, there are a whole bunch of seaplanes coming in. It looks like they're chasing down the bombers. But the commander count, Bartos' commander is still intact. But I don't think there's anything stopping this Titan. Another juggernaut is making its way across. It's going to take a while to get there. And they haven't been able to deal with the north. The Titans. Oh, those are some juicy looking reactors. Can also just get the production. The gantry here. All those res bots. And with that- oh, oh, oh! Down goes. The entire base. Barto trying to move in. Titans do move significantly faster. The push to the north has been stalled out. Barto, there's still some Shivas moving through. Barto gets hit! Just collateral damage! He's taking hits. Two Titans. Here's Flash. He- wait, he resurrected a commander! Barto became the last commander! No, Barto! Watch out! Oh no! Oh no! They're not out of it, but Barto! He's running out of energy! They're targeting the ground! They know he's there! Oh, what happened? Where did the other command? Here comes everything! They're targeting- They can't see him! They're just firing at the ground! It's a disaster! Oh, the Titans are- <laughs> 
Now, I don't think it was going great for the team, but... Down he goes. Uh, a bit abruptly, he became the last commander. And that, um, means that he ended up being in an incredibly vulnerable position for the last commander to be. A good effort, but didn't quite have enough to stop that early momentum. Units died. Sal really threw himself at him. Flash. Proving his dominance in yet another game. As he managed to hold down several fronts. Is it the Flash? I have no proof otherwise. Even if his, the country flag says Spain, that's exactly, very sneakily what Flash would do, I am sure. So. Uh, yes. But, hopefully you enjoyed um, this replay uh, of the highest level 8v8 I could find somewhat recently. It was posted in the Discord. Um, hopefully uh, you learned a little bit. I'm going to work on the FPS. It seems to be a little rougher while observing, I think because I'm just jumping between so much. Um, and also trying to record in very high quality, which we might have to look at. But uh, still, the fact that there can be thousands of units on the screen and you can actually tell what's going on. It's quite impressive. Um, oh yeah, I feel like I got my money's worth with Beyond All Reason coming in at uh, zero dollars. So thank you for watching. I uh, hope I made your day a little bit better. Good luck, have fun, like, subscribe. Stay tuned.